We are authorized by the owner companies to operate and build nuclear plants in our service territory. So in red there, you see the, the territory, and we have three locations for nuclear plants now. Uh, in the southeast corner of Alabama is Farley Nuclear Plant near Dothan, Alabama. And of course, we have two nuclear sites uh, in Georgia. Uh, we have Plant Hatch uh, near Vidalia, and of course, Vogel uh, here near Augusta. And that's uh, the site of units three and four, obviously, is on the real estate uh, in, in uh, at the plant bubble. Why nuclear? Uh, Brad said it, uh, the statistics say there's going to be 4 million more people uh, in the state of Georgia by 2030. Uh, in addition, the average rate of consumption has increased uh, 11%. And so as a result, uh, there's a need for new baseload generation of electricity in the state of Georgia. And baseload, I mean, uh, it's uh, electricity that has to be reliable uh, a majority of the time it's in operation, uh, which uh, limits you to either nuclear or coal or gas. So we know uh, what the issues are environmentally. You've heard of those from a coal standpoint and the challenges going forward. Uh, you see what's going on in the Gulf with uh, oil rig right now and the uh, gas prices associated with uh, the instability of gas and its supply. So the obvious choice going forward uh, in a, a future that we need uh, significant baseload generation was nuclear. But uh, then why nuclear? What's different than in the past? Well, uh, number one, just go look at Vogel Units 1 and 2. They've been operating for almost 25 years uh, in a safe, reliable manner, and I must give my teammates at Vogels 1 and 2 a lot of the credit for why I'm even here today and have the opportunity to build Units 3 and 4. It's their track record and the track record of the industry since Three Mile Island in 79 of no events, operating nuclear plants in a safe manner for 30 years in a reliable manner of almost a 90% capacity factor and also in an economical stewardship uh, that's unmatched uh, made it the decision that the nuclear renaissance uh, needed to occur. And uh, it's occurring right here uh, in the CSRA. In addition, other things that have gone on is that we have changed the regulatory process. So the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission has uh, gone through what is called a streamlined process. It's a one-step licensing process. So next year, not only uh, do we expect uh, a license to build the nuclear plant, but also that would be a, include a 40-year license to operate that plant at the same time. Uh, secondly, standardization and uh, streamline design. Uh, we've learned a lot of lessons about how to operate nuclear plants in, in the last 30 years, and we've incorporated that into the new design that's both standardized and, and simpler to operate. And, and lastly, we have more pre-planned or what is called modular construction. Uh, we will have floors, walls, and ceilings that will be manufactured uh, in off-site location and shipped to the site by trucks and we will assemble those floor walls and ceilings to form what we call modules that will then be set into place with one of the largest cranes in the world. Five football fields and that is to excavate down to our solid rock foundation. And that's a, a nice photo of the solid rock foundation that's 90 feet below the surface. So what do we do next? We start filling the hole back up with dirt that we know can be compacted to at least a 95% compaction rate. Uh, we will fill the holes uh, that are 90 feet now, some 50 feet, which will form a, a solid foundation which will withstand any earthquake that we anticipate with a significant safety factor in the foreseeable future. And so as a result, that will form the foundation for our basement uh, or our basement of our nuclear plant operation, which operation of Unit 3 scheduled to begin in 2016, Unit 4 in 2017. We have presently employed over 50 employees uh, that will be supporting the operating staff. Most of those are the future training staff for our operators, very rigorous training program required for operators. And from the operations staff, we have teamed up with Augusta Tech 
and they have established uh, the training curriculum for our future operators, be establishing curriculums for our other disciplines. And so we have teamed up with them, and in fact, our future instructors are at Augusta Tech physically, which began in January of this year, and will go forward uh, until 2014, at which time we will move those operators out to our training facility, which will be built at that time. And as you see the numbers there, by the end of this year, we'll have over 100 uh, Southern Company employees uh, for the operations, gearing up to over 800 full-time employees that will be on site uh, for 40 years further uh, from 2016, 2017, operating the units. And then I get always a question. Uh, my son or daughter, brother, sister, aunt, uncle would love to have a job, either construction or operations. And let me just give you, we have flyers in the back, NRC, to build the remainder of the plant and then go forward with operations. Uh, Georgia Power is the owner, along with uh, Oglethorpe uh, and, and MEAG and Dalton Utilities as, as uh, minority co-owners. Southern Nuclear, the company that I work for, uh, is the uh, constructor and overseer of the construction project. Westinghouse provides the design that we will be building, and we have contracted with Shaw uh, Corporation to actually build. So we have what is called an engineered procurement construction contract with the Westinghouse Shaw Consortium to build 5% of companies that we have employed have been within a 50 mile, or 100 mile radius, excuse me, of Vogel either in Georgia or South Carolina. So we are impacting the local community. And with that, uh, I want to say thank you for letting me be here today. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, I'll stop uh, for any questions that you may have. And recently, I have been a little confused about the use of union employees, and I would appreciate you clear that up for me. And also, in relation to that, when one and two were constructed, were the labor unions involved in that construction process? Thank you. Uh, yes. Is this one? Yes, sir. Um, Shaw has recently signed a labor agreement uh, with the local unions to uh, build Vogel 3 and 4. Uh, the reasons for that uh, is Shaw's decision, number one, we, we Southern Company as oversight uh, are not involved in that decision. However, uh, some of the reasons that they have shared with me is the logic for doing that. As you saw uh, one of the charts there, over 3,500 employees are going to be required. And to get the qualified labor uh, force that they're going to need to be successful, Shaw felt the need to sign this agreement with the labor unions. Uh, I will say that from a local community standpoint, it's probably going to work to the local community's favor because I will say up until now, uh, working in, in the uh, non-union arena, they have been paid per diems to employees to come and travel uh, from a home greater than 50 miles away from the site. And we're signing this labor for that and will continue in their core uh, efforts uh, to finish out their contracts as they are. Any other questions for David? Yes, sir. With the uh, exciting advent of Units 3 and 4 coming to this area and the support that you have garnered from the Educational Committee or, or the community and Augusta Tech in particular, are there plans on the board perhaps for Units 5 and 6? <laughs> no. <laughs> there is real estate at Plant Vogel for a Unit 5. However, it uh, is not very practical at this point. However, I will say that there's going to be a need for electricity in the southeast United States, not just global, in the future. So there are planning efforts within Southern Company to look into the future, see what the needs are, see where the needs are, and determine what is the best base low reliable source of power to meet those demands going forward. So state that. Are you getting cooperation, David, from Washington when it comes to nuclear power expansion throughout this country? Yes. It, uh, everything from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission on a day-to-day -day basis, 
uh, as I refer to it, uh, the wind is at our back. We are first at Vogel 3 and 4, but not only is the community behind us, my company is behind us, our industry is behind us in all facets, the regulatory commission is behind us, so uh, we have, we are set up and we are poised to be successful in an unprecedented manner in my 31 years of career in, in this nuclear power business. David Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Had, had his hand up first, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, and I apologize. And uh, we do want to keep everybody on time. And I know you all want to come, uh, go back, log in just a couple more quality minutes at the workplace. I just have a quick question about nuclear engineering training. I was in Georgia Tech 25 years ago when they brought up the program. That, you know, nuclear got out, out of favor. And uh, what do we do about staffing these plants uh, need nuclear engineers? Is there any, I mean, I don't know if the other states produce, I don't think Georgia produced a nuclear engineer in 25 years. Georgia Tech has a nuclear engineering program. <laughs> the faculty professor, one of the professors of the nuclear engineering is, is on our uh, safety oversight board. So the, Georgia Tech has a nuclear engineering program, University of Tennessee, University